Hi guys, Jasmo here and this is my second video on the cast on crit assassin build. In this video I'm going to cover how to level a character for this build because this is not something you can level with cast on crit. You have to switch to it at some point, especially what I'm doing which is low life cast on crit. So you're completely switching your build and what I decided to do is to give you like a very very simple leveling template uh, that you can follow. If you know a little bit about, uh, about like the speed running strats what people use, it's basically Orb of Storms and Storm Blast Mine. Uh, so you can basically follow that standard leveling uh, pattern in the beginning. So you just get Orb of Storms, uh, Storm Blast Mine. You can also, of course, prepare gear like I have here because this is not a league starter. So feel free to use any leveling gear that you want. Um, what you can see on the screen right now is what I would like recommend as like a very cheap, easy start. Just make sure to like get an onslaught gem and maybe um, freezing pulse in the beginning so that you can get the immediate onslaught slot and then also get the storm blast mine and you can just uh, roll with that in the beginning uh, you don't equip your tabula until you get uh, like a four or five link uh, on your arc because we're gonna basically switch to arc and this build is designed to like go assassin right away and we're going to be picking up a lot of the uh, skill tree points that uh, are gonna help us path to uh, the actual skill tree that we're gonna use later on uh, but basically we're gonna uh, use arc for most of the leveling and this is pretty much like a very easy one button pretty much leveling uh, setup so as you can see right now I'm using orb of storms and frost bomb link to onslaught arcane surge with frost blink and then storm blast mine you can connect that to lesser poison as well um, but it doesn't really matter that much because we're gonna switch in act two out of that anyway and in act two uh, we're gonna switch pretty much after we do weaver because after we do weaver we get access to uh, to like uh, controlled destruction elemental focus and that's a huge amount of damage you can have like onslaught uh, control destruction elemental focus added lightning uh, together with arc and that will give you per uh, permanent onslaught pretty much like whenever you're killing monsters and you're just tapping uh, arc and killing everything and then later on you're gonna add uh, spell echo to it remove onslaught and you're just gonna rely on a five link so as you can see i'm switching the skills here and now i know i'm no longer gonna be using any other skills pretty much i could use like the uh, orb of storms and link it to something but i wanted to make it like super easy so i'm pretty much only just going to be using wave of conviction and arc but you can also use orb of storms it doesn't hurt like it definitely boosts your single target damage if you want to bother with that for auras i'm using here uh, precision and clarity both like very low levels just to get uh, a little bit of extra crit and a little bit of extra mana and then i'm using herald of thunder and herald of ice for the extra lightning and cold damage to spells extra shattering uh, every now and then and this is the skill tree we're rushing pretty much to elusive you'll see the skill tree in the description i will post uh, like um, a pob that will show exactly the skill tree that i was following when leveling this build uh, but basically you rush through like the light to like elemental damage nodes to elusive after that you pick up some life then you go to like lightning damage cast speed and then you go toward elemental overload and you're gonna be leveling with elemental overload for most of the run and then close to the end uh, when you get like your um, third lab you're gonna switch out of elemental overload because you pretty much should have a lot of crit with the persistent power charges uh, and that will give you way more multiplier than the elemental overload but that's like way late in act 10. Uh, I definitely recommend like early on you can start with um, with what are the ones called like so something spring life sprig i think is the the leveling ones so start with that and then at level 20 switch to crafted ones because they still will give you more damage just crafted uh, lightning damage you do that with like um topaz ring alteration like topaz ring that is rare alteration and a magic wand and that will give you a level 20 uh wand craft that will boost your damage by a lot um once you get to uh like act three uh you're going to be uh you're going to be soon doing your lab and the first lab that you uh, want to be doing like pretty much like before you get to the calms and the rest is on in act four that's when i do my first lab um you want to get the movement speed right so i will show this in a moment you'll see and uh 
uh, you'll see basically which node to pick, but everything is in POB, but the movement speed is the first one. And then in the merci like, uh, Cruel and Merciless Lab, the second and the third, you pick the power charge nodes. Um, this is very quick leveling, like you'll see, it took me a little bit under two hours to go through the first five acts and then uh, like one and a half hours to go through the uh, last five acts, also making sure to get to level 70. So it took me like three and a half hours to get to level 70 with this and I'm not the quickest player, I'm not the best speedrunner and I'm still using like the leveling gear here and so on. Uh, this is not very, very optimized for like speed, but this is just something to make leveling very easy and still at the same time fast, right? So that's what I was focusing on, to make the leveling very, very easy. Uh, so as you can see, I have the arc with the setup that I mentioned before. Uh, we have uh, also uh, the dash, flame dash with arcane surge. And we also have uh, the wave of conviction also linked to arcane surge. And that way I can deal decent single target damage. Later on, after killing Malachi, what you want is the hex touch support, previously known as curse on hit. And you want to put conductivity with hex touch on your wave of conviction. And that will allow you to like double debuff the target. Um, and then we're also using the smoke mine because just to get the maximum boost of speed. Uh, the source of elusive for now is basically the uh, passive skill tree, but later on uh, we are like the last uh, uber lab uh, that we're getting uh, is the elusive on the assassin uh, ascendancy uh, once you get to counts like you should always have like leveling gear that has resistances on it so you will never worry about resistances you can always prepare that ahead of time uh, it doesn't cost much to have that gear prepared um, and yeah that's basically it you can see I think I show the skip here like I made I made sure to sh in the footage even though it's like time is to speed, but you can catch like some pretty cute skips in some places. This is a very known skip on the uh, Count's Dream where whenever you see like a waterfall of lava, you can jump up with a smoke mine, but you need to aim at like the top left corner of the fourth buff or something like that, like around that area. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you figure it out, you can do it uh, very easily almost every time. Um, so yeah, that's, this, is, this is the part where we killed uh, Malachi and we pick up the Hex Touch. And from uh, from the other for the other stratagem, we're picking up our spell echo. And with spell echo, we're going to be a little bit locked in place, but the DPS definitely increases with arc, and it becomes pretty enjoyable uh, when you also get like the elemental overload, and it's very very easy leveling. Um, in terms of the gear, like at some levels, like keep keep uh, track of what levels you can use flasks at because you can switch to onslaught flask like in act 4 you normally get onslaught flask but i think it's you need like level 22 or something to equip onslaught flask so you can get onslaught you can get crit uh, you can get uh, like the 3000 evasion flask i think it's jade i really like that flask during leveling because 3000 evasion during leveling just makes you almost immune to everything it's very very useful as you can see play time one hour 57 minutes this is not a racer time but this is just like very comfy leveling to to make a character and it takes like under four hours to make this character and in act five i'm switching uh, the wands and the chest and the gloves so for other items i'm using like uniques but for gloves there are, there's not like a great unique that i want to use so i'm just using life and resist for ones i have added lightning damage increased spell damage and resist crafted on it and for the chest i just bought like for a couple c like a five link with life and resist as well that i craft another resist on it right and that way i just am covered on resist i have like 150 or like 120 in depending on if i put my um uh, what is it called le hoop if i put le hoop on then i have even more resist so i'm definitely overcapped and got plenty of health just a bunch of attack speed as well and attack and, and uh, sorry spell damage with added lightning damage and that's it uh, after like act three uh, of the second five, so act eight, right? So in the beginning of act eight, like after you kill the Doedry, like somewhere before the Lunaris and Solaris, you wanna do your next lab. And in that lab, uh, you can enchant your gloves and you can pick up the first power charge nodes. That's what you wanna do. And after that, I definitely recommend actually farming Harbor Bridge instead of, um, instead of the Blood Aqueducts early on, because it's a bigger mob density. There are more uh, magic packs, it's actually 
better XP early on when you're at like level 55 or something like that. Uh, what I did is I farmed the Harbor Bridge to level 60 because all I wanted to do is just to get to level 70 so that I as quickly as possible switch to my actual build, right? So I just spammed Harbor Bridge until I was like level 60. Uh, and after that I did uh, Lunaris and Solaris and after that I farmed a little bit of blood aqueducts and I moved on with this story, right? It's very very easy um, And yeah, I think right now I'm, I'm like hitting level 60 and then I'm going to fight uh, Lunaris and Solaris and at this point the damage is pretty good leveling all the gems uh, You can see the current state of the skill tree, but of course it will be in the description uh, and you can pick it up pretty much in any order you want. Whenever you see that you're like too squishy, you pick up more life. Whenever you're lacking damage, you pick up more damage out of the available options. Um, and uh, for Pantheons, I usually just during leveling run the Brian King and then like reduced, uh, reduced damage taken somewhere. I think one of the like bottom left of the smaller Pantheons, that's what I'm running. Uh, the footage is speed up like times two because I wanted to not make this video too long and only show some highlights of how the build looks like in, in specific zones. If you have any questions you can post them in the comments below I'll make sure to answer them but it should be pretty self-explanatory it's just like it's basically this is basically a video for people who know more or less how to level but they just want to know like what is the good way what is the comfy quick way to level this type of a character and when you should like grind a little bit of levels when you should uh, progress in order to be efficient right so this is desecrated chambers i recommend farming until you're like 69 pretty much and then doing your lab somewhere along the way when at least you're like 68 or 67 um, you pick up the last um, power charge nodes and then you unspec the elemental overload so what i did is i here still have elemental overload and i was checking okay so this is how the damage looks like and i stack my power charges i look at my crit chance i'm like okay this is enough crit chance to uh, spec out of uh, elemental overload and put these uh, points into crit directly so that's what i did and the damage jumped up pretty significantly so from this point on you're pretty much crit and uh, this is like the last uh, stage of Kitava, just to show you like how long did it take me to get Kitava, but keep in mind I was farming most of the levels, so I was like uh, level 69 here, and then after that I farmed a little bit more of the desecrated chamber, so here I had like four and a half hours, and then it took me like maybe five, six more minutes to uh, farm to level 70, and that's pretty much it. And after that, I was able to equip all of the items that I had in um, the stash prepared for this build. I talk about all of the items that you need in the previous video, so you can check that out. Um, in the next part, I'm gonna cover mapping, playing with the build and the setup. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.